the United States Air Force Atlas, the most advanced intercontinental ballistic missile in the free world. Transformed from blueprints to flights with an urgency unmatched since the Manhattan Project. Identical in size and power to the Atlas that was hurled into orbit around the Earth, this missile is destined for flight tests on the Atlantic Missile Range. The mission begins at San Diego, California, and it will end at a selected point in the Atlantic Ocean off Cape Canaveral, Florida. Other missiles are rolling off the assembly line. Production missiles built with production tooling, scheduled for hot firings in the test stands at Edwards and Sycamore Canyon, and for shipment to Vandenberg Air Force Base on the Pacific Missile Range, Warren Air Force Base near Cheyenne, Wyoming. For this Atlas, the mission is flight, another in a series of tests needed before the Atlas is accepted by the Air Force as an operational weapon. Directed by the Ballistic Missile Division of the Air Research and Development Command, each test makes full use of accumulated information from all previous tests, and in turn adds one more program step toward the target. An ICBM as reliable as man can make it. Thus, more advanced missiles are coming off the production lines even as this atlas arrives at Cape Canaveral to begin its pre-flight checkouts. From this building near Cape Canaveral, Air Force officers of the Missile Test Center and Ballistic Missile Division direct the coordinated efforts of military, scientific, and industrial missile launch teams. And this is the nerve center. From this vantage point, the Air Force directs all the vast complex of facilities known as the Atlantic Missile Range. A two-way flow of information is maintained over thousands of miles of telephone cable and radio links, connecting central control with the downrange facilities out in the Atlantic, as well as the installations surrounding the launching sites on Cape Canaveral itself. One of these, the Azusa system, uses high-frequency signals received by these four antennas to track and record the missile's flight path. Signals from the guidance center will make corrections in the predetermined flight path if they are needed. Telemetry antennas at Cape Canaveral will pick up more than a quarter million items of information on the performance of the mechanical and electronic systems radioed from the missile. At the launch complex, the missile is erected in the service tower for final checkout. Control from the blockhouse, upper left, 700 feet from the firing pad. It is flight day minus one, 24 hours to go. In the Windward Islands, 420 nautical miles southeast of Cape Canaveral, beyond Grand Bahama and Ulithera, is the island of San Salvador, 12 miles long, six miles wide. San Salvador, where Columbus first landed, is Station 5 in the chain of 10 islands on the Atlantic Missile Range. Central control at Station 5 is tied in with all the downrange missile tracking stations by telephone cable or radio. Code name, the Kingston Net. Kingston 1 is central control at Cape Canaveral. Kingston 1 is with Kingston 5. On the day before launch, Station 5 checks out the tracking equipment needed for the test. According to an operational plan carefully worked out in advance by the Ballistic Missile Division's management, scientific, and industrial teams. These antennas on the receiver building will pick up flight information from the Atlas. Readings on heat, vibration, pressure, Engine performance broadcast from the missile's transmitters continuously during flight. At the guidance site, signals from beacons on board the Atlas will be transferred to magnetic tape. Just as a human voice can be transcribed by a tape recorder, the voice of each Atlas missile transmitting a quarter million items of information to ground stations is recorded for future analysis. With tape, each missile can be flown again and again in the laboratories each microsecond of flight stretched out to yield every possible bit of information, improving the performance of each future atlas. 
Here, during every second of the missile's flight, its exact position in space will be plotted and recorded. This computer will receive data from the Atlas, such as decreasing weight and surface drag, increasing speed and altitude, solve the equations involved, and instantly predict an impact point, while the missile is traveling many times faster than a rifle bullet. If impact prediction indicates the Atlas is off course, a signal from this command destruct console will trigger explosives aboard the missile and destroy it. Flight day minus one for Atlas. Instrumentation checkout at station five continues. 830 miles down the line beyond Mayaguana, Grand Turk and Puerto Rico is station 9A, Antigua in the Leeward Islands. Tracking installations at Station 9A include this Kennedy high-gain antenna, a duplicate of the antenna at Cape Canaveral. The Kennedy high-gain will track the Atlas as it rises from behind the curvature of the Earth and passes overhead toward the selected target area downrange. Radar in phase with similar installations on the other downrange stations will automatically track the nose cone after it separates from the missile re-enters the Earth's atmosphere and impacts on target. In the receiver building at Station 9A, the timing instrumentation gets a checkout on flight day minus one. Here, the measurement of time is precise. The equipment must be adjusted to compensate for the fraction of a second it takes each timing signal to travel through the telephone cable from Cape Canaveral. Timing an exact means of common reference on all the charts and tapes recording thousands of items of related information during a flight. Timing is the key to the detailed study of flight test records. Preparations for flight tests continue. Information on local weather is relayed to Cape Canaveral from all the downrange stations. This constant flow of data enables the meteorologist to predict weather conditions along the entire 6,000 mile range. Beyond Antigua, 1,250 nautical miles from Cape Canaveral, there are only two island stations, Fernando de Noronha and Ascension. The gap is filled by specially equipped Samave ships, acting as mobile tracking stations. Working out of Trinidad, these ships take up their assigned positions before each Atlas flight. They carry telemetering equipment and radar to track the missile and to locate the nose cone data capsule in the ocean at the end of the flight. The search for the Atlas data capsule ejected from the nose cone will start immediately after impact. Search aircraft will be dispatched from station 9A on Antigua to make a visual and radio search of the target area, guided by signals from a transmitter in the capsule. When the data capsule is located, it will be returned to station 9A aboard this ship. All these operations at Antigua are coordinated from this building near the receiver site. Flight day minus one for Atlas. I got the matter out for a custom banner. I wish to uh, verify with you or to confirm for you that the telemetry link frequencies are the five link frequencies spelled out in part two of the OD and not the six link frequencies spelled out in the table of frequency utilization. Do you uh, understand, over? Uh, custom nine, this is uh, custom nine. I'll put a reference here last. Uh, uh, Roger, understand uh, the five frequencies we were using. Uh, I believe we had this once before, over. Okay. Our custom manner alpha, this is a custom manner. You are correct. Uh, we Station 9A is the assembly point for flight information recorded on the Somavi ships. Here, telemetry tapes from another missile flight are delivered for immediate airlift to Cape Canaveral.
aircraft are also used to assist surface ships in locating nose cone data capsules from missiles. They carry two flight crews and four observers, and are specially equipped for long overwater flights to downrange impact areas. They operate out of Patrick Air Force Base near Cape Canaveral. At installations on all the islands of the Atlantic Missile Range, final preparations continue for the Atlas flight test. Flight day minus one at Cape Canaveral. The missile is in the service tower on pad 13, one of the four Atlas launch complexes. All missile systems have been checked out the engines have been test fired. The payload is placed in position. When this nose cone is automatically separated from the missile at a predetermined point in space, the natural laws of speed and gravity will direct it in an arc to its target. The contents for this trip are recorders and research equipment and a data capsule. The exact point of impact is measured by two different electronic systems to ensure accuracy. The missile's flight path before nose cone separation will be visually recorded on these maps and charts at central control. In the conveyor telemetering trailer, final adjustments are made on the electronic equipment used to receive and record flight information. on the Atlantic Missile Range. Preparations are complete for the Atlas flight test. Flight day, filmed and recorded just as it happened. Attention plane. Test conductor, this is test stand. Uh, go ahead, test stand. Uh, the boot has been sewed up completely around the booster. So the service tower is in the process of being moved to the transfer table. All right. Test at minus 80. Okay. Test conductor, this is our assistant. Go ahead, Arnold. 
We have satisfactorily completed the range safety command test. All right. Ford's going to test conductor. Bad test conductor. Uh, Frank, how's this local shower now? Uh, wait one, I'll make a check. Missile AC, internal DC. 
135. Most call reports with show case. 130. Securing locks tanking. Minus 120. Removing arming safety pin. Arm switch to arm. T minus 60 seconds and counting. Mark. Missile helium to internal. Ready. Minus Range ready switch arm. We have a line Starting bomb removal. Mark. Missile prep complete on engine test. Data check. It's not coming out. Locks tanking. Satisfactory. Out. Pressurization. Satisfactory. Water system. Satisfactory. Change operation. All clear. No storm bomb. Clear missile. All the pre start panel lights are green. The missile prep complete light is green. All recorders to pass. T minus 25 All seconds. Recorders to start. Burning a start. Burning your start light. 25 seconds. Pull up a tree. Minus 20. Is that on the money? 20 seconds. 15. T minus 10. 9, 8, 7. SRO, are you still tracking? Yes, sir. Things are looking real fine. Okay, John. You got a real runner there. Good. Plus two minutes. Locked on. Radar at station three has track. Plus two thirty. Radar at station five has track. Ten corners has kicked some five. Telemetry on signal and recording at seventeen seventeen thirty five. Prediction still moving out. Signal with 17, 18. How's the sustainer telemetering? Plus 330. Uh, still has sustainer, still has burners. Hot dog. Kingston 1, this is Kingston 9 at 1901. Plus 4 minutes, 30 seconds. Mark 5. All the way, boy. Mark 5. The nose cone is separated from the missile and is traveling toward the target at more than 12,000 miles an hour. Attention, one, this is 
advises Kingston 9 at 19 and 55 seconds. Kingston 9 Alpha advises telemetry on signal recorders on. 